Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're out here in Utah and we're about to do some downhill mountain biking and I just had a kind of fun idea of doing a shootout between a few different cameras. Lately I've been testing the Osmo Action 3, which has been really great, but I'm kind of curious to see how it really compares head to head versus the GoPro 11. I also have a GoPro 11 with the max lens mod and an iPhone 14 Pro with the active stabilization mode. So we're gonna do a couple different runs on this trail and just kind of switch cameras each time and see which one looks best. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts and yeah, I can't wait to see how it goes. So let's get it started. Okay, so this first run, I'm on Osmo Action 3. I have a separate microphone that I'm gonna be using most of the audio from, but I'll cut back and forth to the audio from the camera. Right now I'm in HDR mode, which is supposed to be kind of the highest quality. I got a full crew up here. <laughs> okay, let's see how this goes, new gaps. Never actually ridden this trail, so be able to ride along with me. This is the natural audio. The DJI does not do the best with the wind, which is why I like to record to a separate microphone. But I think the HDR should look pretty good and I'm in the wide field of view with the rock steady. So far I've been really impressed with this camera, especially with the mount. The magnetic mount has been awesome. I also love the battery. The other day I did an hour and 14 minute full record time with no overheating. We're in the non-HDR mode, so this is a standard, but I'm in the wide field of view still. I got the decent light color profile. All right, so that was the run with the Osmo Action 3. Hopefully it turned out well. And uh, yeah, let's go try out the GoPro 11, see how it compares. How's that? That was fun, lots of jumps. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this time we are on a GoPro 11 with a uh, standard lens. And yeah, I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. All right, this time we're following Kaylee on the same trail. So we'll kind of keep the trail the same for comparison's sake. And hopefully the lighting stays pretty similar the whole day too. Kaylee's one of the fastest uh, American downhill women, which is pretty rad, stoked to see her shredding in front of me. I haven't ridden behind her before, so this will be fun. So like I said, this is on the uh, eight over seven aspect ratio. And the thing about this is that it doesn't allow you to have the hyper smooth boost stabilization. So it doesn't really do any horizon leveling. But like I said, this is how I usually film just because it gives you the most data possible, biggest bit rate, hopefully the best resolution and the biggest ability to reframe everything. But after this, we'll do a run with the max lens mod and you can see the difference there. So again, I'll kind of switch between the native audio and the microphone that I'm using, lab mic that I'm using. I'm hoping the lab mic makes this video watchable because <laughs> a lot of times the GoPro audio is not very usable. <laughs> that was funny. I thought I was going to land on you. Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't hit that last time because it was like kind of windy. Yeah. I didn't know that it's such a ginormous case pad. Cool. So that's a full run on the GoPro 11. And with the standard lens, next run we'll do a GoPro 11 with the max lens mod and see how that thing works. You ready, Joey? Ready. I'm going to follow Joey on this one. We're using the GoPro 11 with the max lens mod. And uh, yeah, it should do a little bit more horizon leveling, but the quality is not as good as 2.7K. Do you know what all those numbers mean? I don't, but we're about to find out. Okay. <laughs> so Joey is actually the marketing manager at Pizzari, which is our bike sponsor. And uh, he's a really good rider. He raced World Cup downhill for a while. He actually has done really well at like Sea Otter Dual Slalom, things like that in the past. So you'll be treated to a display of skill like no other. <laughs> So a lot of times I'll use this max lens mod mode. Um, it shoots 2.7K, but you can shoot in a taller aspect ratio and you get horizon leveling. So it really helps you avoid having the camera too high or too low, which can happen a lot of times when you go to film. So I really like this setup. This is not as good a quality. And I think that the Osmo action from my, hold on. <laughs> I think the Osmo action from my experience is kind of a good middle ground where it's a little bit better quality than this setup, and but it has a little bit less horizon leveling, but it's slightly more than the GoPro with the standard lens mod. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting. I'll be curious to see what, what you all think. And then I have no idea what to expect from the iPhone. It'll be my first time using it. I think you shot a rock up and it went in my ear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was around the horizon stabilizing and uh, you'll see if Joey kept in frame very well. <laughs> but yeah, um, now we'll go try the iPhone. I have no idea what to expect on that and it uh, should be pretty interesting. You. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna be using an iPhone 14 Pro on this run and I have a peak design case with like a magnetic mount. And so basically what I'm gonna do is pop this mount on here, give that a shot and I'm gonna put it in action mode. I haven't used this before, so we'll kind of see how it goes, and fingers crossed it ends up looking cool. But yeah, we'll take a look and see how it goes together. It's called action mode. Action mode. You ready? Yeah. I have no idea what this is gonna be like. I'm gonna follow April down on this one and see how it goes, and hopefully my phone, which is double the cost of a GoPro, ends up staying on. All right, round two. Let's see if this works any better. I kind of got skunked on the first one. <laughs> So on that first lap, it was really difficult to figure out the angle. I thought I had it good. I've ridden GoPros a lot and definitely need to change up the angle and have it quite a bit higher with this. I don't know if it's auto framing or what, but the crop on this is a bit tight. So hopefully this is a little bit better. So after two failed attempts at getting the iPhone angled high enough, we decided to try a bite mount and shoot vertical. Surprisingly, this looked really awesome and I got to capture April absolutely shredding on the trail. The only negative is that the audio is completely atrocious on the iPhone. It seems like the vertical orientation gave much more room for error and still provided a decent amount of width. After seeing some promise with the vertical mode, we decided to have Nick follow me for a bit and see if that could possibly work out any better. This angle is still a little cropped in for my taste, but I think with some additional time and playing around, we could figure out some cool shots with the iPhone. The reason I was so excited to try the action mode on a phone is that so many people already own a phone, and although it is expensive, it could serve as a fun, occasional POV device. 
Although personally, I would much rather wreck on a $329 action cam like the Osmo compared to a $1,000 phone. I'm really curious to hear what you think looked best in the comparison. To be fair, the lighting conditions were pretty much perfect for action cams today, and the trail is relatively smooth, although the jumps do really showcase any weakness in the horizon stabilizing. We tried our best to show a fair comparison between the cameras using settings that we are really familiar with. I know there are a lot of different settings people will use, but these are the ones that we know and decided to kind of showcase. I also know the Insta360 has had some great entries in recent years, and we've actually tried many of them, but we haven't felt the quality was quite up to par with the GoPro stuff, especially for YouTube videos, although it works great on social media. For years, it seems like GoPro has been the cream of the crop when it comes to action cams, and now I think that DJI is really starting to pressure them when it comes to action cam supremacy. It'll be really fun to see where the action cam battle takes us in the coming years, and I'm excited there's finally so much good competition. Um, I'm really curious to see what you think. We actually probably will make our decision for what we're going to use this year based on what you guys say and your feedback. The last few weeks, I've been really liking the Osmo Action 3. I love the magnetic quick mount. I love how snappy it is. The responsiveness of it is great. And the only thing I wish is that it just shot in the HDR with a little bit taller aspect ratio. But overall, I think it looks pretty good, and I'm just curious to see what you think as well. And yeah, thanks as always for watching. Um, if you did get value out of this and you could click like or subscribe, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Cool. Later. Now you guys get to see the camera squid uh, ride. <laughs>